This is Kenya's biggest conversation, getting into the final hour of the show this lovely Tuesday morning, the 26th day of October 2021, the president's birthday. Siti Muga has the day's proverb. Yes, I do. John, I chose this proverb specifically for you because I know your take on these proverbs. And I thought this one would actually sit well with the notion you have of proverbs, specifically my proverbs. Mm. Well, specifically the proverbs that I choose to speak about. <laughs> so you know. give us the proverbs. Okay. <laughs> it's a digo proverb. Kusagala bure, sio kama kunyandeka bure. To sit for nothing isn't the same as walking for nothing. Now, I know I simplify it, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is this. Huh? Uh, a safe here who subscribes to the Islamic faith will know that one of the hadiths mm. in the Holy Quran states as follows. One sitting is better than one standing. One standing is better than one walking. One walking is better than one running. So it follows that this does not go with the hadith. Ah, one sitting is but it, but, the, it, but but it does is better than one walking. But it does. Oh. You see, a lot of the proverbs that people have, remember, are born <laughs> out of experience, isn't it? Yeah. And there are very few experiences that are instrumental in shaping people's lives than their religious experiences. Very few. My two cents. Mm. Okay. Okay. We'll determine the currency of those cents. Asif Karim, our guest in the studio this hour, and John Sibiokum also joining us. <laughs> what is it, John? <laughs> now, just waiting for Ndu to give me a gift, but. Um... Oh, don't, don't even worry. Why are you saying it for people? Which bypass are you giving me? <laughs> now that you're giving people roads. Northwestern imagine, bypass. Can you imagine what I'm doing? Now you're my friend and I know you. I'm giving others roads. What will I do for you, John? I wait impatiently. <laughs> John Sibiokumu, um, the journalist, presenter, moderator, MC, actor, teacher. Uh, what else are you? I don't know. Very many I, things. I do know that I'm here to discuss the Kenya International Sports <laughs> Film Festival. <laughs> All right. So let's fast forward to that. So let's, let's see whether you're a sportsman. I don't know if I've heard anything like that. But you'll tell us. And then Asif Karim is a chairman of the Safinas Foundation and also the Kenya International Sports Film Fest Festival. Let's begin with the guest guest. All right, so John, you're not a guest guest, yeah? Asif, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation, The Situation Room. Thank we you call that the hot seat. Um, and because you come in to talk about the Kenya International Sports Film Festival, this is not going to be a hot seat. It's just going to be a very comfortable one for you. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. John, welcome as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. So guys, start telling us about the Kenya International Sports Film Festival. Let's start with you, Karen. Yes. Uh, the concept of this started way back in uh, 2013, 2012, when uh, there was a documentary done on uh, my family, you know, which has contributed about 100 years uh, since coming to Kenya in 1926. Uh, with now three generations have, have played international sports for Kenya. So as, as a tribute to my parents, I wanted to do a documentary uh, for what has transpired and to honor uh, what my parents have done and my grandparents. So this documentary was done and then it featured in various international film festivals. And I was invited to New Delhi in India for a sports film festival where they were showcasing uh, various top sports documentaries from around the world. So as uh, we were watching the different sports film festivals, it struck to me straight there and there that these are wonderful, exciting, inspiring stories. But Kenyans have equally, if not more. Mm. So I said to myself, as soon as I uh, launched the documentary and mm -hmm. a coffee table book that was a longer version of the documentary, mm. I'm going to do the uh, as a new project uh, film festival. And so in 2017, after launching the book and the documentary, we then went into the project for 2018. That's when we had the first Kenya International Sports Film Festival, where we showcase and we get movies from around the world, submissions. Uh, and then, of course, we have the jury uh, that go through it. And then we select about 30 to 40 top movies uh, suggested by the jury mm. and then we also have panel discussions 
affecting uh, sports in Kenya and globally. And so that's the concept of the four days of this uh, Kenya International Sports Film Festival. This year is going to be the fourth one and the second virtual uh, uh, since inception. Okay. And John Sibiokumo is the head juror for this year. What does that mean? Ah, well, I'll go back one and say something about Asif. Mm. Uh, I'll do the political thing of not actually okay. answering your question, <laughs> saying what I wanted to yeah, say. Yeah, and then you come back. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I must tell you is that when I met Asif, when he approached me, is that uh, I said to him that one fine day I'd seen him in a public place and actually wanted to greet him and seek his autograph. Because we Kenyans are very bad at this. We meet uh, Douglas Wakihuri in the street and we don't recognize him. But Asif Karim, uh, for me growing up, he actually played both tennis and cricket for Kenya. But mm -hmm. I remember him in the days of the Morris Odumbe, Steve Ticolo. Uh, he took us to three World Cups and played cricket at a national level between the ages of 17 and 39. Mm -hmm. Which if, ever, if you've ever been a sportsman, you know, to sort of play <laughs> rugby for Kenya... From 17 to 39, he's no slouch. Uh, so anyway, he approached me. I think every film festival has to have a head juror, a chief juror, somebody who is the sort of public place, uh, face rather, of, of the whole uh, event. Mm. Uh, and it was a great privilege for him to ask me. Uh, I tried to sort of wiggle in by saying I'd narrated and directed a few films of myself. And I've been in the odd movie, mm. so I know that the craft of movie making. But I just had a, a really huge jury that sifted through 1,410 films. So that were submitted through a sort of, you know, key in this, key in that. Right. Uh, a lot of them. Do, were sort of hoaxes. They were sort of, you know, my walk with my dog. Why not put it into the festival? <laughs> Filmed with my phone on my sidewalk. <laughs> exactly. So there was a bit of that going on. But we managed through three levels of, uh, of adjudicating. So one group of people just said, let's have these. Then another group of people said, let's. And working through features, documentaries, animated films, each and every category. And then it fell to the head jury, comprising uh, two gentlemen from uh, India, Binoy Banerjee from India, Amit Tyagi from India. We had Leila Hossein from Iran and uh, Sharp Taylor. Sh uh, Taylor Sharp. Taylor Sharp. We've got to get it right. Is it Sharp Taylor or Taylor <laughs> Sharp? <laughs> Taylor Sharp from the USA. Mm. Uh, and of course, we had our juries here, our uh, seasoned animators who took care of the animation category because they're quite simply, I know nothing. And I, it's a very specified and rarefied field. Mm. So um, what's it meant to me? It's meant watching more movies at a trot than I've ever done in my life. <laughs> uh, Are these all I, movies I about sports? Yeah. They're all movies about sports. Yeah, I think. Uh, and and the, when I give the um, head jurors report, there are also movies about what sport can teach us about life. Mm -hmm. So uh, you uh, sports that I didn't know, hand cycling, you find somebody who wants to break a record by a stationary bicycle. You find a movie about somebody who wants to climb a really tall mountain. You find somebody who wants to r run cross country up Mount Everest. And it is indeed an international. It, the, the big word here is international. Mm. I mean, we're not mucking about here mm. we as a, a patriotic kenyan that is it's one of very few such i think there are only five sports uh, festivals in the world mm. and we've now joined or i see if we'll tell you more about the international fraternity right but uh i don't need to tell our viewership that we're a sporting nation <laughs> uh neither do i have to say that we have the you know wonderful uh, people infrastructure so uh, it's just I, I, I fell into it and I said yes immediately because it's a way of putting Kenya on the map. Mm. And then as I think it's interesting that you then have been able to pick up the, the sports aspect. Um, but then as you look at it now, what, what do you think this would achieve? Because sure, we have all these entries, people who are coming in, telling a story, you know, uh, but 
specifically for Kenya, we've had the last two, three years where sports has tried to, you know, really peek uh, into the limelight, right? A lot more than it was before. Issues coming out, uh, uh, trying to have a lot of these um, issues that are being faced come out to the surface. What do you think it would achieve um, for the fraternity beyond, you know, the production of film? I think this is a very, very good question and a very good statement you made because this now goes to the concept of KISF, as I said earlier, is that Kenyans have also a lot of stories. Mm. But the weakness we have is that we have no documentation, mm. whether in, uh, in print form or whether in, in movie or documentary. I mean, there were, if you ask the young generation right now, who is Kipchoge Kieno? I can get, it was shocked me that, you know, seven to eight out of ten don't even no know. Clue. So the, one of the concepts of KISS was that we need to Im inspire the creative industry, mm. that we need to start, because to me, that's a low hanging fruit. Mm. It's ready work. I mean, there's thousand and one stories we can do on sports in this country. And now that I am in the Kenya Film Commission as a, as a director, uh, we are also encouraging, uh, we now have an empowerment fund where we give We've already given 50 million shillings to the creative industry to do documentaries and movies generally. Mm. We're now going to have the third cycle coming up soon where uh, the commission has budgeted 25 million shillings to specifically do sports documentaries and sports movies on Kenyans. Mm. And we will want to make sure that it's a success so that it becomes an annual calendar event so that you have eight or ten documentaries produced every year. And as you know, Kenyans will love success. So when it becomes a success, you will have a lot of people coming in. And I can see that as a, as a snowball effect. Mm. Uh, and if we handle it well, it also fits into the president's agenda, mm. you know, because he wants to create jobs. What better than sports and the creative industry to, to create those jobs? Uh, and also, of course, uh, improving our health when it comes to sports. So it, it has a lot of benefits. And I'm hoping that the, as, as we are progressing and we see the growth, in this festival, we're seeing the increase in the awareness and, and what is like this program today is helping is increasing the awareness and that is also key to this whole festival. Um, if we were to look at success, you have mentioned the creation of jobs through awareness, through an understanding. What other benefits accrue from this particular endeavor? Well, as we always say that we have all watched a sports movie. We always get excited when we watch a sports event. We've all been in a theater and we've, we've come out wowed after an inspiring uh, sports movie. So I think it's important as the slogan in our festival is that sports unites people and sports movies and documentaries inspire mm. a society. Mm. So I think that's uh, what we want to achieve. Uh, uh, on, on through this festival. And it's like I always say, when our marathoners run, we don't say which tribe is, is running. It's Kenya that does this at the end. Mm. Uh, when you go to the football, okay, I know we're struggling, <laughs> but we, we don't talk about, <laughs> about which tribe is playing. Mm. You know, it's Kenya that is playing and you see the Kenyan flag. So yep. I would urge even the politicians to take a cue that sports will be the easiest medium to bring this country together. Mm irrespective of what tribe we are in. And if you add to it the creative industry, where you have doc inspiring documentaries, uh, inspiring movies on our... I mean, why, why does Hollywood and Bollywood do biopics? Or do... I mean, surely, uh, don't Kenyans deserve that? Can we not have a movie on Eliud Kipchoge, mm -hmm. a biopic? Or Rose Tatamuya on where she started from? So it would inspire the younger generation of where our journey began and where we are. Where we are. And finally, one more point. Mm. It is very critical that we must leave a legacy and a, and, a, and a heritage to the future generation because it is the responsibility of this generation to leave all that landmark for the generation that's coming ahead to tell us where this journey began and where we've reached. Mm. Let us use a practical example of a sports story well told, submitted to international festivals and viewed. Your, this, the documentary that you did, tell us about it. What was the story? What were you telling? And as you tell that, you'll also be telling people who, those that don't know uh, Kipchoge Kaino, many may not know about Asif Karim and your family and what you've done in sport. So tell us that story for a bit. Well, this, remember, uh, my grandparents came from a colonial subcontinent, India. Hmm. 
Uh, and in those days, uh, over 150 years ago, over 100 years ago, people were looking to survive. Uh, mm -hmm. And so one of the areas was that if you're struggling in your home, you try and look for uh, greener pastures other other places. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there were a lot of Indians coming here for the railway. Uh, it, that's been the history of how the Indians came here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they were, did not come for that, but the communities that came ahead would encourage the people who are struggling that, that why don't you come here? There's some good opportunities in East Africa because mm -hmm. a lot of the Indians uh, concentrated on Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Madagascar, South Africa. Mm -hmm. That was the, the domain of where the Indians came from. Mm -hmm. So then you, you have this family come here to another colonial master. You're struggling from one place, coming to another struggle. And then you have my grandfather, where you're looking to put food on the table. He's now encouraging his kids to go and play sports. To me, that, that is, I wish I could ask him, what made him do that? Because mm. at that stage, you would never think of that. You would think of, how am I going to get a job? How can I use you? Yes. Yeah. you know? So he encouraged uh, his uh, kids, and my father took it to a completely new level, that at the age of 17, he bought, uh, he started tennis at the age of 15, buying a tennis racket that was broken from Datu's auction. You know where that was, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for five shillings. Mm. And so he fixes the racket and then win, goes on to win against the colonial masters at the age of 17. I mean, just try and f visualize what I'm talking, you know, mm. in those days. And then he goes on to win for 25 years, uh, unbeaten, going through from the age of 17 to 42. He also played very high level of cricket. Mm. And obviously, so it was in the system. It was in the family. So every day there was a... You see a tennis racket going, you see the shoes. You know, those days we had no social media or television or anything. So that's the discussion at home. Mm -hmm. And obviously he encouraged, he did what his father did and he encouraged us to continue with the sport. And it's because of the sports that my brother and myself got a tennis scholarship to go to the United States. Now in those days, late 70s, 80s, again, the situation was very tough to go no mm. money you're just trying to uh, survive mm. so sports became an avenue for us to get an opportunity to go to the u.s to study to graduate and play at the highest level of tennis mm. so that tradition carried on i played cricket also for the country and so it carried on and obviously now my son who also saw me because when he grew up he saw me on television so obviously like any any little boy seeing his father on television was a novelty mm. this i'm talking about in the 90s mm. and so he carried on and so that's the story that we are talking about in this documentary uh that's giving the ups and the downs and and the racism that one went through uh, uh colonial times post-independence i went through it on racism on on religious grounds on tribal grounds on, on all that so it's a story that goes up and down uh, but it was a very fulfilling project, uh, and it's, um, for those who get an opportunity, it's on YouTube. We then furthered it when people from India got inspired. And I had somebody, one of the teachers, who said, can I please uh, take this documentary and have subtitles in Indian language? Because mm. many could not understand the English. Mm. So we had it done in four Indian languages. So that gave me another trigger idea that why don't I also do it in Swahili? And we also did it in sign language. And then we did it in Arabic and then Farsi. So it's in 10 languages and all the, those are on the YouTube. So that's the brief on, mm. on, on the documentary. And then, of course, we did a coffee table book, mm. which is the extended version of the documentary. Brilliant stories. And in listening to that story, I mean, these are stories that we don't hear about and we don't tell. And, and that's who we are. John, you've been in the film industry and, and this industry for a while. You have also, you know, read books and written books. Um, we were talking about your book the other time. Why is it that we don't tell our story? Well, we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves. Uh, there's always this, there's this part of this narrative is why mm. don't we do this? Why don't we do that? Mm. I really think when I've been asked this question before that we do enough within our means. Hmm. Uh, I think that uh, what people forget about the creative arts is that they cost money, they're expensive in any culture, 
they're not the preserve of the man in the street. You don't just sort of tap up in, in the UK and go and watch an opera. Mm. <laughs> Neither do you make a, a 40 minute film, uh, which is uh, Oscar material. But I think that on the ground, relative to our history, uh, the 50 plus years that we've been running our own affairs mm. and the exposure to these art forms, I, I, I'm not one of these, why don't we tell more of our own stories? Do you feel mm. we tell enough of our stories? Sorry? Do you feel we tell enough of our stories? I think the, the, we do, but the idea is also the exposure. Mm. Uh, because I don't want to sort of, I haven't come here to sort of rubbish people early in the morning. But um, maybe later in the day, <laughs> <laughs> later, in the, later in the day, maybe. But you see, for example, uh, look at the avenue that we've got to show our films here. We'll be on Facebook, we'll be on a YouTube channel, and you go to Facebook and put in Kenya International, and you're on. But let's assume that there is we've done a music documentary hmm. and we want to get that documentary on one of our major TV channels. You know, and I know that the first thing you have yeah. to do is to pay to be put on. Sure. OK, it's, so, John, then yeah. as you're talking about that, then if maybe it's not telling the story enough, but then perhaps in terms of support then yes. to have those stories told is maybe what the focus ought to be because i'm list i, I yes. i'm listening to the stories that i i mean goodness i've never seen the documentary I, I, many exactly. people who probably have never exactly. but then so i've seen documentaries i've to... seen documentaries of babe ruth out yes. of the u.s i've mm -hmm. seen documentaries of kobe bryant i've yeah. seen documentaries of you know so many people yeah, across the board again, why your, is that why is that i don't one doesn't know the, 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 this is a terrible question to ask people why is that no, but this uh, is the thing. The they thing, have support. The, 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 the infrastructure the, of support is we have, quite major. We have, we have support here. Mm. Uh, if we were to run through the whole gamut of people who've given us support, mm. and it's very bad to go the sponsorship way, but here's, the, here's, the, here's our little uh, magazine for the month because Asif also runs a magazine called Sports Monthly, mm. which uh, he just to sensitize the young people about sport with lots mm. of articles. Mm. And it's been running... I discovered from knowing him in the past few months for years and years. But look at the people who, if we were to read them, and I hope mm. I get it. We've got the Ministry of Youth, Safaricom, Beyond, the Kenya Film Corporation, KFCB, Nish, Ambassade de France, DFS, Aristocrats, Lady Fatima, Occidental, Media Pros Africa, Safinaz, APA Insurance, Executive Healthcare, Jaffrey, Starkey, CR, Signs. These are the future. I get because it. Because they but are... They are where the chums come in. That's I get why it. But shame I for the day. Did they, did they rock up to you and say we want to support or did you have to go look for them? We had no, to go and look for them. Big time we had to go and look for them. We had to go but and look this for is, them. No, she's <laughs> made a good point. <laughs> the key here is our distribution yeah. is where we are stuck. Right. When you yes. get all these productions done, mm. now if you cannot take it out there, yeah. it, all that investment and all that money, I mean, I, you're absolutely right. It's a struggle mm. right now in mm. this country on a distribution level like this documentary was done it was easier in fact people in india and iran were more interested in my the documentary breakthrough was in mm. india then yeah, in fact the breakthrough was in india in mm. fact it was premiered in india not in kenya mm. so the distribution angle that that we have needs to be looked at and that's where even now the kenyan film commission which is determined to to uh, improve uh, the creative industry we are looking at the distribution angle of how but i think it's important that the media supports these things uh, of course i understand that's my point actually if 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 so you're the in media all those you're supporting yeah. us you're very nice <laughs> if in all these years we had actually got into a point where let's say kbc yeah. in all those days was <laughs> the one that was telling your story mm -hmm. and telling so who are these kareems that we are seeing yeah. what's their story let me be able to tell would have those stories, would have the stories of all the other athletes and sports personalities in this country done as stories, as documentaries, starting from that point. Indeed. We don't even have that much. Cool. Yeah, but the, 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 the culture of self criticism. <laughs> we have a culture, Mr. Latif, in yeah. our dear, dear country, where the, the headline story of every single newspaper on a daily <laughs> basis has to be political. Yeah. You'll never find a change that shifts to bumper agricultural crop in Wajir. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. so Ken, this is Kenya's biggest conversation. It continues in the room this morning is CT Muga Nduoko, Eric Latif, Asif Karim, chairman of the Kenya International Sports Film Festival, 
and John Sibiokumu, who is here today as a head juror. You know, he's a boss, he's a head juror in this particular festival. The festival is going to take place virtually between October 28th and the 31st. I'm done. Now speak. <laughs> I was just saying before I was rudely cut <laughs> off for a break <laughs> that uh, no, if we live, we're talking about giving the prioritization. Mm. It is a big topic. What are we as a young nation to prioritize on a day to day basis? Mm. Maybe some of these things could be considered luxuries, all told. Mm. I mean, they're very dear to us. One of the things that we, uh, we mentioned about these films is that if we're seeing James Bond, the latest version, in, in our cinema houses, some of these films are as satisfying as pure entertainment in their own right. Mm. The mere fact that they're carrying a, a sports docket is neither here nor there, but they're just good films. So I wouldn't re reveal who's won and why they've won it because it takes the sting out of my announcements of the winners on the 20, 31st, which mm. you must not miss. Mm. Uh, but uh, they're good films. They're entertaining. So it's just a level of entertainment. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the, the prong that we're hooking on to mm. is that maybe uh, distribution ways of showing what we've done. I don't know the mechanics of it, so mm. I wouldn't criticize. I, I wouldn't dare go and tell a newspaper editor what to run as a lead story. I wouldn't dare tell a TV producer what to run as headline news. But I don't know the mechanics of it. OK, so let me ask a couple of questions. You yes. talked about a thousand plus entries, right? Yes. 1,410. 1,410 1, entries. And as if all of these are Kenyan subjects. No, no. International. No, no, no. On, on Kenyan stories. I mean. No, no. No. Okay. No, so no. they're cross board. They're cross board. They're cross board. The Kenyan story, mm. is, I can reveal this for the first time, mm. is about a team that we take to Canada to play a game which CT has never heard of lacrosse. I have. Okay. <laughs> I just, sorry. I have. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. not cross country. No. <laughs> Lacrosse. It's, it's, yeah. it's a sport that they play with something like looks like a big yes. tennis racket. Exactly. And it's interwoven with some fabric. So you actually catch the ball. And you catch the ball and run with it. Right. right. So yes. there's somebody who created yes. an NGO to sort of help young children. Uh, it's a British made film. Yeah. But this lady who came with these intentions to give a focus to the young of the sort that Asif was mentioning earlier, uh, we actually take a team. Uh, so, yes, there's a film, uh, a winning film from, uh, oops. <laughs> well done. Uh, uh, there is a winning film. There is a winning film. There is a winning film from, oops. So if you could attract this number from around the world, so what couldn't you do? What couldn't, you know, anybody do with a little bit more time and effort in telling the stories? And I am insisting on this because it has been the bane of existence for a lot of other countries in the world today who maybe don't have anything to shout about. Mm. And when I talk about this, it's not a lot of world power. They're not uh, dealing with geopolitics or other, other, other heavy things. But they become a force to be reckoned with because the resource that they insistent upon is something that other people would ignore. Right. True. When the U.S. was True. busy working on its politics, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they kept the population busy with Hollywood and sport. And look at the huge forces that they've become today. Right. So if you could attract that much, how much more then could be done? Again, I mean, I think it's a crying shame that 17 to 39, those are 18 plus years of your life basically playing for this country. Right. 23. 23. How many others... <laughs> How many others mm. are in that position Man. today yep. mm. who have something that could... There are athletes that we find about that we find out about when they make the headlines. They won the Berlin Marathon. We don't even know who that person was. But people in other countries know who they are. Indeed. And, and, and also, why is that? They make the headlines. You keep on asking why, Andrew. You're yeah. used to like a five-year-old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Actually, it's, it has to be a five-year-old approach to this matter yeah. because... Okay. Five year olds are inquisitive. The world is strange to them and they are busy it's a trying very strange to. Thing. Okay. Because the other time when some of our athletes make the papers is when they are at starvation's doorstep. Mm. They are now not in their first or second youth, and it is clear they have no means of earning a living, and some they are suffering. Mm. And yet, there are people who contributed significantly to bringing enormous glory to this particular country. Indeed. Yes. You know, I call our sports, uh, and I, I repeat every opportunity I get, and I'll do it now also. Our sports 
are the unsung heroes of this country. Mm. They are really the true ambassadors of this country. The glory that they bring to this country, the indirect tourism that they bring in this country. I mean, you just said we get so many numbers. So if I said we got 1,410 submissions from 104 countries, mm. that means Kenya has been heard by 104 countries, mm. by 1,400 producers and directors, and people who are associated with them. So it tells you that the opportunity is there, but this is a work in progress. Mm. Mm. It's not going to happen overnight. As we say, it's a five-year-old. We are now the fourth year. Our target is that by the time we reach the fifth year, this sports film festival, and I mentioned it to John, must be the canes of, of, mm. uh, of the sports mm. in the world. Mm. We are, we are capable of doing it in terms of organizing it, in terms of the way we have done it even this year, and when you will watch it and follow it through. And we need all stakeholders to come in. You know, we have, we have started this uh, idea, but I don't want to own it. I want this to be owned by the country mm. because it must be something that will leave a legacy for the next 100 years. And the legacy can only be lived if we bring in the correct people and structure it in such a way that it remains for a long time. But do there's, there's another prong here, whether you're suggesting that the world owes me a living thereafter because I've done something for the country. Maybe not necessarily uh, and yeah, no, Not necessarily me. I'm not being that flippant. But you're saying... I am being that flippant. The, 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 yes. the, the idea is that, okay, if you, if you won a gold medal yeah. at the 1986 Olympics, wherever they were held, yeah. uh, and so many years later... Uh, you're in a bad way. Uh, what has happened in the interim? What are the structures that didn't allow you? Uh, I mean, he has, a pro he has professional skills. Mm. Yeah. Somebody would say to you, uh, Eric, uh, do you have medical insurance? Mm. Are you covered by NHIF? Mm. Do you have these structural things? They've got nothing to do with the fact that you won an Olympic gold medal. Yeah. It has everything to do with shortcomings with the structure, uh, uh, national health it's a bigger thing. It just, I don't think that um, our athletes, are, and, and if you're an athlete who takes to the bottle and drinks excessively, then obviously that's going to bump you off at some stage. To bump society at large for your, for, for your plight is, um, is a facile way of <laughs> analyzing a social problem. No, let me, let me develop, uh, ride on what he has just said. And, and this is where the whole crux of the matter is. Mm that we as a nation have not taken the seriousness that it deserves what sports has done. And I'm talking from the top. Mm. If you look at the historical records uh, from the government side in terms of the ministry, we do not even have a ministry of sports as a standalone ministry. Right. You look at all successful nations in sports. They have a ministry of sports on its own. Yeah. But more importantly, mm. we must have the right person managing it. You can have a, a Ministry of Sports standalone, but you have somebody who has no clue other than knowing the spelling of sports. We have a problem. I mean, it, it's, it's in public domain. So it's very critical that we need to be critical to ourselves on that matter from mm. the leadership. That They've unless set us up, I see, to come and criticize. <laughs> now our trip home will not be a gift, <laughs> but a burden. John, <laughs> John. You, you know, John is, is stuck on this word criticism. Yes. Okay? No, this isn't criticism. Yes. This is what you call an honest discussion. Objective discussion. Yes. Because in, in all honesty, if the people who head the sports ministry were clueful as opposed to being clueless. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> yeah. The discussion about our athletes would be completely different. Indeed. But let me add something I wanted to yes. say this. Now, as a former sportsman, you know, I interacted with with some of my colleagues, which very sadly right now are struggling. Mm. Now I, I always say as a businessman, as somebody who's had the opportunity to exposed education wise and many other things, is that is one thing to make money. But it is another thing to manage money, which mm. is much more difficult. Mm. If you ask all of us around this table, yep. managing money is much more difficult. So what am I saying this? When our athletes do represent this nation, they must also be educated on how to do other things other than life. But remember, a sportsman's life is this many years, but he's got this many years to live. How is he going to manage those many years if this is not firmly put in, in, in if, perspective. In this objective conversation, mm. if you go to Eldoret Town, 
the number of high-rise apartments that belong to gold-winning medalists is a village in itself. There are the, 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 the great mass of our athletes are doing very well, thank you. And that's if part, we're having, so that could also be part of a problem. Yes. That, you know, just because you have come out of Kenya, you've come out of Itan, you've gone and ran and come back and you have some money, the only thing you can invest in is what you've been exposed to, what you've seen others doing. Invest in real estate. Buy a piece of land, put up high-rise apartments. Now, the next thing about making sure that those apartments work, you find an athlete has gone and opened a hotel. They are not in the business of managing a hotel. They have no clue how to manage a hotel. But Eric, you're suggesting that there should be a body, that uh, 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 the Kenya Athletes Guidance Association, that guides people on what to do. CT. Yes. Why not? Yes. Yeah. That's Absolutely. exactly what I'm suggesting. Okay. Yeah. You know and why? You would head it, <laughs> You know why I'm yeah. saying that? Why, why? The reason I'm saying that uh, yeah. is because athletes, they start early. 15, 16, 17, you're already starting to get into that. So your focus is on winning. Your focus is on bettering yourself, becoming a better athlete so that you can win in championships. So you don't have much time that you're spending in school. Even when you're in school, you're just doing it to pass the exam so you can get the paper, not to learn. Now, if we don't have a structure that actually supports them and prepares them mentally and financially, this is what will happen to you. Where does such you a structure winning. exist elsewhere in the world? We're talking about benchmarking. We talked about all these countries. Tell me one country that has set up a, uh, an institution to manage its athletes. The country hasn't set it up, but the industry exists. Yes. And it's that same industry that manages that manages our athletes. You'll find professional coaches, professional trainers, and some of them are even business managers. So they come in and they start managing you from the very early. So when, when kids go into the sports academies, let's say in the UK, and they've joined a football club, it's a young 9, 8, 10, 11-year-old, that child is being managed by a system that's already been set up by the industry. But it was encouraged. In this country, we need to get that encouragement. And that's why the, I think the Ministry of Sports comes big in. Big topic, Eric. Big topic. Yeah. We're doing objective conversation. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm the guest who's become not, the naysayer. It's not I, I, you, I, right? No, it's not comfortable because many of our athletes, we, we read the papers at 60 bob a day. They're managed by outsiders. They're managed by outsiders. Yes. They're the ones who, ha who link them to things about drug taking and everything else mm. it's not jim otienos or sam karaoke who's managing these guys why not i don't know precisely because it's not just a question of managing their lives the sports management is an entire industry it is who gets you this gig who puts you here who gives you these endorsements it's it, 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 it's as i said it's an entire industry now i'm just saying spread the blame game no it is <laughs> again john it isn't blame it isn't blame you see Many of our athletes, perhaps one doesn't hear of the serious problems that they later encountered in, in, the, years, in, 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 the, in the years when they were now uh, advancing and in, in age. Mm. It's because they were either employees of the prisons department, the police department, right, the military. or the military. Right. So when they stopped running, they just continued with their, their work job. and they retired. Now, there is a new cadre of athlete who doesn't work for the government it doesn't kill us to have a safeguard so that the very thing that you're saying foreigners do kenyans can do it for heaven's Indeed. sake of course they can what you say is true about the athletes and you're talking about eldred it is true literally every tall building when you ask you'll be told it's owned by yeah. this athlete and it's owned by the other now that is a new generation of athlete who is actually has the affairs being managed mm. so it's a good thing so even when that person stops running you can say they have something to fall back on but there was a generation that did that opened these doors for these athletes and they didn't have that good fortune now well, as if we wish to we sorry to go back to our, our baby we wish <laughs> to honor this generation yes. of athletes within the kiss 2021 that is honoring the heroes, drawing them to light. I think there's an exhibition, a yes. talk, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, just to highlight who these were. Because, again, there, apart from showing the movies, there are a series of panel discussions which were are going to be part of that. It's a long, you know, nine to six every day festival. 
So uh, we're discussing mental health. We're discussing, mm -hmm. uh, not we, Drugs. I'm not part of the panels, but mm -hmm. people will be discussing. Uh, so I think, uh, again, to go back to the idea of efforts being made, mm -hmm. I think KISS 2021 is going to allow Kenyans to focus mm -hmm. on their sport. To have those yeah. conversations. And they should take the opportunity to, you know, it's a long day, nine to six every day for four days. Yes, I mean, there's a summer many days. days. Sure. Absolutely, I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, mm -hmm. some of these things that we're talking about, these, this, this, I think springboards have already been erected from you know uh, what you've done, Asif, and just looking at opening up the opportunity. You're saying, okay, can we come, come together? Can we see from what you'll be able to do over the next couple of days and see the possibilities that are there, and then you know grab them and run with them? Indeed. Well, as I said, it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of good things have happened over the. I'm very optimistic that uh, things are going to improve. I'm not saying we have not done it, but we want to do better. Mm. We want to keep growing. And that is the essence of life, mm. that you want to keep growing and improving yourself, people around you, so that you leave a place better than what you found. Right. And, and as I said, this is the fourth year. I mean, just to say how impactive this festival has become, FIX, which is the Federation of Cinema Television Sports in Italy, mm. is the only recognized body by IOC. International mm -hmm. Olympic, mm -hmm. and they looked out for us. I didn't even know such a body existed. And they said, you are doing a wonderful job. It's Africa's premier event. Mm -hmm. And so they invited us to be members, and uh, next uh, month we are invited to the General Assembly. So there again, more opportunities are going to come up where you're going to meet uh, producers, uh, directors of sports movies, the International Olympic is going to be involved. So I can see a lot of good things happening ahead. Uh, and as I said, for those who would, would like to associate with us, mm. they're most welcome. I mean, we, we are an open door. Mm. It's not something, as I said, I may have initiated it, but it should not remain with me. You don't it want to own it. Me. No, no, no. It needs to move forward. There's something that you mentioned earlier about distribution, that our challenge has always been distribution. So people are thinking of creating this content, but they just don't know the channels on which to distribute any movement on that front? Well, again, as I said, that's a huge challenge that we have not only for uh, for sports, but even at the Kenya Film Commission, we do discuss mm. that you know, at Mashinani level, we are trying to uh, advocate for, uh, for the creative industry to grow. Even when you do the productions here, our distribution network is very challenged, it's very limited. Mm. Like John said rightly, you go to a, a media house, the first thing they'll tell you, before we, we even think of, uh, of, <laughs> of, of airing. Even airing. So that's uh, an area that I think the, the media needs to come in. Mm -hmm. They need to really come in in whatever way. Uh, and as she rightly said, how can we work together? So, you know, it, one could be uh, co-ownership. Right. So that if, if for example, if, if KTN came in with a movie and said, all right, we will do the distribution along with you and whatever income comes, we share. We so share. it becomes a win-win situation. And we are empowering one another. But there's been some movement, though, to, uh, in, the, in that direction, in terms of um, media outlets thinking and commissioning productions, commissioning productions. So, so far, it's all on the entertainment, um, you know, miniseries. But I think it's also developing into uh, doing biopsies, doing stories, reality TV, and commissioning people and telling them, you can create content, we will buy it, we will put it on our platform. So I guess it's a direction, it's a good direction that, uh, that's been taken. The thing would be for people to see sports documentaries and sports stories as another genre. Indeed. Because still I think the creative industry in the country is, just think, is still thinking on, all right, so I've been given an opportunity to create content and put it on, uh, say, Maisha Magic Plus. And the content that I'm thinking is, okay, so John, you're a good scriptwriter, so let's create some drama series that we shall put here. Maybe something else would be John, who's this experienced, thinks, how about we tell the story of this and that athlete or sports personality? Indeed. Chal challenge to you. Mm -hmm. Taken. Challenge. Taken. So easy. Okay. <laughs> to start immediately. <laughs> <laughs> to start, start immediately. So as if as we conclude, mm -hmm. yeah. the film festival begins on the 28th, that's two days from today, up to the 31st. What happens in those days? Well, uh, the viewers can follow online. It's going to be on our Facebook uh, page and on the YouTube channel, mm -hmm. Kenya International Sports Film Festival, KISS. Okay. Uh, so you'll be, you'll be uh, we're supported by 
Uh, of course, in live streaming, internet is very important. So we have a fantastic support from Safaricom. Mm -hmm. uh, so we expect it to be a very solid, steady uh, live streaming. Uh, and it'll be some, f as John said, I mean, he's gone through all those movies. I've gone through some. I mean, there's some phenomenal, mm -hmm. uh, exciting, inspiring stories and some sad stories also through sports. So I would urge to all the listeners to, to follow this. Uh, you will enjoy those four days. Uh, and there'll be a lot of good discussions also on the creative industry and how, for example, we're discussing animation in sports because animation now has become a trillion dollar industry. Mm. So how can animation go into sports, sports biopics, drug problems? We, by the way, we're also getting uh, Ferdinand Omanyala. Mm. He's going to have, be having an exclusive uh, interview with Milton Nyakundi. Nice. So that's something exciting to, to listen to. And so all the information is on our social media pages. Go on our website and you'll pick up the program. Is there going to be like a gala night? Well, unfortunately... Main night yeah, where you know, we'll John comes and says, dressed in... Virtual. <laughs> you don't know what virtual means, Eric? Mm. What's happening to you? <laughs> so does gala mean that you cannot have it virtual? A virtual gala night? Yes. <laughs> Drinking my whiskey on air. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. So. <laughs> yeah, well, we, the first two years we had it uh, with the gala, but since the COVID restrictions, mm. uh, virtual will be the way, all the way. Okay. And we're hoping next year, God willing, if things go well, then we have a hybrid. You know, we'll have a physical and a, and a virtual. But remember, and we realized how virtual played an important role. As much as COVID became a problem, it became a blessing in disguise mm -hmm. for our festival. We had over 25,000 followers Great. over the four-day event last year. Mm -hmm. Whereas you ask people, Kenyans to come to, to come the to the, to the, to the uh, theater, mm -hmm. you would have to be doing short of begging them to come. Mm -hmm. And you would hardly get... 50 or 100 people, people to come you know, coming there. So virtual has been a blessing. To give, to give uh, viewers something of the scope, I think maybe it will be on the 31st, the last day, mm. from about 6 o'clock, when the winners will be announced. Okay. So the, the, the appreciation of the international in KISS will become clear when you see just, you know, which films are coming from where. Great. And it's from all over the world, really. Thank you guys for joining us. I just want to add one more thing. I just want to compliment John. Mm. Uh, that in, he, in 15 in seconds. In 15 seconds, he's done a wonderful job as far as the head judge is concerned. By getting he's the taken it, to Spice FM. He's taken it to a new level, in new thinking. <laughs> well done, John. <laughs> and I want to thank you guys for giving us this opportunity, for sharing this information. And I'm hoping that the listeners have learned something today and we can take this Indeed. to a new level. And thank, thank you. you for coming. Asif Karim, chairman of the Kenya International Sports Film Festival. And they had Jura John Sibiokumu. Asante Nisana. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.